everyone, here is Dr. Venadusi, and in this video, we are covering some of the bones in our skull. And the first one we'll talk about is the ethmoid bone. Now, if this is the first video you are watching about bones and how to study bones, I would strongly advise you to get the habit of studying the name of the detail of the bone associated with the name of the bone. For example, now we'll go over the ethmoid bone and the ethmoid bone has several details. And these details in a bone are called bone features. So this bone feature right here of the ethmoid bone, this is the ethmoid bone, okay, right here. This is the frontal bone. This is the bone we have all the way in the front. This is the frontal bone frontal bone but this part right here this is all the ethmoid bone all this okay and the ethmoid bone has this little thing sticking up you see this triangular structure right here let me see if i can make it better right here this triangular structure this triangular structure is named crista galli so you should say Cristagalli of the ethmoid bone because Cristagalli is the detail, is the bone feature that we find in the ethmoid bone. So this is the Cristagalli of the ethmoid bone right here. And then you see that we have this plate and this plate has several little holes in it. This plate is named Cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Okay, so this is the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone, and that's the cristagalli of the ethmoid bone. And when we look at the ethmoid bone in this model, that we have the bones in different colors. If we remove the frontal bone, we can see right here, this is the ethmoid bone, okay? And we cannot really see the ethmoid bone from an anterior view because the only part of the ethmoid bone you would be able to see is this part right here inside of the nasal cavity, right there. And this part right here that we see inside of the nasal cavity, this part, this, is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. And the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone gets united with this bone that we have here in the bottom part of the nasal cavity. And this bone right here is the vomer bone. And when you look at this, you can see that the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone together with the vomer bone they form this wall that separates our nasal cavity into right and left sides. And this wall is called a septum. So this is the wall, the septum, that separates our nasal cavity. This is the nasal septum. And for convenience, we are dividing in half. And we say that the top part of the nasal septum is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone and the bottom part right here is the vomer bone. So if you are asked, name the bone and the tag is point in the upper part, that is the ethmoid bone. If you are asked, name the bone and the tag is point into the bottom part, the answer is vomer bone. But independently of where the tag is, if it's in the top part or the bottom part. If you're asked name the structure, the structure is what is formed by more than one bone. In the case right here, if you're asked name the structure, then I'm asking you for the nasal septum. The nasal septum is the structure formed by the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone and the vomer bone, the bottom part right here. Awesome. Now, here we have the maxilla, the bone that our upper teeth insert into. And right here you see a suture. You see that? That's a suture. And this bone that you see right here is the zygomatic bone. This is another suture. So after the suture, we do not have the zygomatic bone anymore. The zygomatic bone is right here. 
And the zygomatic bone is our cheekbone, okay? So you have the right and left zygomatic bones. Posterior to the zygomatic bone, we see the suture, and then this is part of the temporal bone. So, the temporal bone is all this, and then you see the suture right here, which is named squamous suture, that is giving you the delimitation of what is the temporal bone. This big bump is a massive bump. And a bump in a bone is called process. Consequently, this massive bump in the temporal bone is named mastoid process of the temporal bone. And we also see in the temporal bone, this little thing is sticking out. And this looks like stiletto heels. And when people wear stiletto heels, they look very stylish. And that's how I want you to remember that this is the styloid process. Process is something that stick out, and this is the styloid, very stylish. Styloid process of the temporal bone. Also, in the temporal bone, we find this depression, which is named fossa, and this depression receives the condyle, this smooth rounded surface of the mandible, which is named mandibular condyle. And when you look at this, this is how this goes. So this fossa, this depression right here in the temporal bone receives a part of the mandible. Consequently, this was named mandibular fossa. It's a fossa, a depression that receives a little part of the mandible. So this fossa is the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. And the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone articulates with the mandibular condyle. This is smooth rounded surface of the mandible, like this. So again, you have the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone articulating with the mandibular condyle of the mandible. Another bone feature of the temporal bone is the external acoustic meatus. It's facing the external side, guys. It's the hole we have in our ear. And if it was possible to put this palito through, we would see that that hole would lead us all the way inside the skull and take us specifically into this position, okay? So, this was where we were, and then, so here was where we were, and then it would end up right here. This is the internal acoustic meatus. So the internal acoustic meatus is in the inside and the external acoustic meatus is on the outside. You can also say external auditory canal if you prefer, okay? Now, another bone feature of the temporal bone is this canal right here. And you can only see the canal in the inferior view of the skull. And you would be able to see in the superior view of the skull. But because this skull doesn't have the canal open, we cannot see in the superior view of the skull. So this canal right here, guys, is the one that we have the carotid artery passing through. And as such, this canal was named carotid canal. Now, the way I need you to identify this canal is by identifying the stylish, the styloid process of the temporal bone. And then you look inferiorly and you see that this canal is right medial to the styloid process of the temporal bone. 
So if you really think about it, this is the carotid canal of the temporal bone. And you can see that right behind it, you have this huge hole. And this huge hole is named jugular foramen. And jugular makes a reference to the little pair for the carotid artery, which is the jugular vein. So you can remember that the carotid canal is right here and the jugular foramen is right posterior to it. The carotid canal of the temporal bone, the jugular foramen is a shared feature. It belongs to the temporal bone because you see here the styloid process of the temporal bone and you see the carotid canal of the temporal bone. So this part belongs to the temporal bone, but this part right here belongs to the occipital bone because this bone right here is the occipital bone. It's the bone that we have in the posterior aspect of our skull. This is the occipital bone. All this is the occipital bone. So here again, you have the jugular foramen. This part is the occipital bone. And this part you see here that we have the carotid canal of the temporal bone and the styloid process of the temporal bone. This part right here of the jugular foramen would be part of the temporal bone. So again, the jugular foramen is a shared feature between the occipital bone and the temporal bone. Now let's look at the sphenoid bone. And the sphenoid bone, is the bone that has a butterfly shape. So if you look here, this is the sphenoid bone. All oh, this, you see, all oh, this butterfly shaped. So this was the ethmoid bone that we identified. And then this is the frontal bone, because this is all the way in the front. And here you have the sphenoid bone. And if we take a look in the colorful skull, we would see the sphenoid bone as this yellow bone right here. You see, it has this butterfly shape. This is the ethmoid bone that got disassembled, but this yellow one, this is all the sphenoid bone. And we can also see the sphenoid bone on the outside when we look at the skull from a lateral view. So this is the yellow bone, the sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone has several bone features. One of them is this, that we call cella turcica. You see, this is the cella turcica. And the cella turcica is very important because it houses the pituitary gland, which is the major endocrine gland we have in our body. So our major endocrine gland has a little house, which is named cella turcica of the sphenoid bone. Also, you see here these canals. You see these canals. Now, if we stick this through the canal, you see? Let's stick this through and let's take an anterior view. It take us there, guys. So that canal is the optic canal, okay? The optic canal of the sphenoid bone. And then if we keep looking inside of the bony orbit, we see this fissure in the superior aspect of the bony orbit. And we also see this fissure right here. And a fissure is an elongated hole. And this elongated hole is in the inferior aspect of the bony orbit. And this elongated hole is in the superior aspect of the bony orbit. And as such, this was named superior orbital fissure. And this one was named inferior orbital fissure. The superior orbital fissure is a bone feature of the sphenoid bone. So you say superior orbital feature of the sphenoid bone. For our purpose, we are saying that the inferior orbital fissure is a bone feature of the sphenoid bone. But in reality, the inferior orbital fissure is made up by the sphenoid bone, the zygomatic bone, the palatine bone, and also the maxilla bones. But again, for our purpose, we are saying inferior orbital fissure of the sphenoid bone. Other bone features that we can see 
are part of the sphenoid bone are these holes. You see here one, two, and three. And this is the Ross sequence. Can you see that this one is oval? This is the hole named foramen ovale of the sphenoid bone. Now, the first one is the R of the Ross sequence. This is the foramen rotundum of the sphenoid bone, followed by the foramen ovale of the sphenoid bone. And the last one is the S. This is the foramen spinosum of the is sphenoid bone. And that's it for this video. Please let me know if it was helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!